Okay, this is the beginning of Claire. And uh, I've got some plans for this. Um, I think they're pretty good plans, but, you know, if you want to do it differently, go ahead. Uh, all right. The, this curly hair, which is just gorgeous, I kind of wanted to recreate that. And that's going to be kind of tough. Uh, at least the way I've, if, if, if you're very, um, I'm, I don't want to call it realism, but you know that. All right. So part of what makes this work too, besides that this is a gorgeous child and these skin tones are just fabulous here. But besides that, you have these highlights where the sun is hitting her hair. So this is mostly backlit. So the sunlight is hitting her hair up here. You see these little fine strands out this way and coming down. And then look behind her. You see these, these uh, areas like here and here. And they're not solid. They're kind of broken up because this is hair. And it's only where the sunlight hits the hair that you're getting this, this halo. She has like this little halo. And so what we're going to do is we're going to mask this area. And by mask it, I mean mask it with hairs in it, not with uh, a solid shape. So that gets pretty difficult. Uh, but let me explain one other thing about your drawing before we get started. Because as usual, I found an error in my drawing. Uh, on your piece, you're going to find a line right under here on the eye. And it looks like that's the whole lower lid, like maybe the lashes would come off. From... Let me see if I can hold it up like this. Like maybe the lashes, lashes would come off of that area, but they don't. They come off of up here. You can't see that. That area of the lid that's above the lashes, that touches the eyeball, uh, it, right here you can't see it from that angle. And this is a little crease under her eye that she just has. So uh, take note of that when you, after you trace it off, why go over and look at where to put lashes on this, because that side of the drawing doesn't have lashes. Uh, also, I came back and I decided I had some of my lines too dark. And I very, very gently uh, lifted these back to be a little bit lighter with my uh, uh, magic eraser. I also have some areas that have dotted lines, which you may choose to use or leave out. Uh, and uh, one of the things about the dotted lines, when, Bill and Christina Dale went to that workshop with, um, oh, what's his name? Ted Nuttall. And he does a lot of dashed lines on his. Uh, I still think it's more important to have them be pale than to have them be dashed, but you could do that. Be sure when you trace this that you do make some marks for the, the knuckles because you want to get these placed correctly. Okay, so on masking, in order to take this abomination of a brush, <laughs> look at that, okay, and use it to make these individual, some of these individual hairs, we're not going to rely entirely on this. Please don't rely entirely on this. It would be a bad, bad thing. Uh, we need to be able to stroke this way, and that means we need to mask this off, and we need to mask this off. Also, when you're looking at your drawing, it's hard to tell where the ear is. You really have to study it. This is the top tip top of the ear. Here's the area going into the ear canal. Here's the side of her jaw and the, uh, and the lobe, which is right there. Gee, that still looks funny to me. Yeah, she's got what they call an attached lobe, I think. So do I. Okay. 
So, um, the fact that there are a couple of lines here where hair goes can really confuse the placement of the ear. I kind of wish I'd left those off just because it's so visually confusing to follow, but I didn't. Okay, if you want to not trace those two lines, you could. So, we are going to go back to this, which I find difficult sometimes, and oh dear, I don't have a folded over spot on this. How did I manage to do that? Oh, I know, I loaned it to Lolly. I blame Lolly. So, I'm going to have to pause the video while I find it. Well, I partially rescued it. I may never get this roll of tape right. So this is a 99 cent roll of duct tape. You know, the packing of the kind you tape boxes together with <coughs> when you're moving. And so uh, it's, it's really great for this, but you need to be sure you've got it, the end folded over so you don't lose the end. Okay, I've got a piece of it laid right here. And I'm going to lay a piece right, let's see, I think we could go this way, right here. Okay. And so what I'm doing is I'm actually masking before I mask. It's hilarious. So I'm pressing this down gently. And I have here, and you can see, I have the cardboard off of the razor blade. So this should work perfectly. I've tried to demonstrate this before with a dull blade. You should never do that. Unfortunately, I have a double layer here. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is very gently follow along with just this edge of this razor blade. Oh, I'm following the wrong line. I just made a mark where I didn't want one. Remember what I was saying about those ears? Here's the outside of the ear and the side of the head right there. Okay. It's amazing that you don't just ruin your paper like this. The sharper and finer the blade, the less damage it does. And you don't have to press very hard, because if you press hard, then you go down into the paper. But this will cut through the tape without you having to press hard. And then when I'm pulling it up, because I don't want to damage the paper, I'm pulling this way. See how far back I've got the the tape, I'm pulling in just, well, oops, there's a spot that I didn't get through. Okay. I'm pulling back in this direction slowly. If you have trouble doing that, you can heat the tape up with a hairdryer a little bit, and that really makes it come loose. All right, so we're going to follow along the side of the head. You know, I don't want to make a line like this through the skin. Uh, but uh, along edges like this, it does no harm. If you want something to really have a crisp, clean edge, this is a great way to get it. Okay. And I drew this, this line here kind of rough on purpose. I just don't like it to look too uh, calculated. Okay. Here we go. Oh, that's the wrong part. I want to pull this part up. Okay. 
slowly. There we go. Now pulling back and pulling back slowly. Whoop, going off track here. I had another little cut in it. So I'll come down this way. Slowly pulling way back. Here, now I can pull way back this way. There we go. All right. Now, some of you know how much I absolutely abhor uh, fan brushes. I'm, I suppose they have their place, and this might be a place today. This might be its place. So what I have here is a synthetic fan brush. It's the only one I could find. I have stacks and stacks of brushes around here, but uh, uh, old ones that I don't use mostly. But... Uh, and I found this. So I took scissors and I hacked into it. What I don't want is a regular looking hack. You know what, I, I think I would like that one to be thinner than it is. So I think I'll just cut more of this off. Who knows, I might actually, I'll save this. I might use it again in the future. Okay, so this isn't the best, but it'll do. Uh, and we have our masking fluid, PBO Fresh Bottle, Christmas bottle, and uh, soapy water. And we need a clean paper towel. Okay, now we're all set. So I'm looking at this, and there's only really a few places where I want to use this. I'm not doing all this with it. I'm using a better brush for part of it. But I want quite a few lines down here. I'm not going to break it up into that many hairs there. Uh, and remember, I'm doing the lightest stuff, but I'm going to kind of make it up there a little bit. And then over here, you know, a few different directional strokes. Okay, so for that, I'm not even laying it out in something. Remember, never shake this up. Okay, here we go. So. Wash it off. Oops. Squeeze the... Squeeze the brush out a little bit. Hmm. Now that doesn't mean then I'm not going to come back and fill in some places and make a few places more solid. I am. That should get me a good start there. Okay. Let's just do the same kind of thing over here. And I'm not trying to follow the hair here because there's really not any. It just looks pretty solid there. Well, I need a little more masking fluid on it, I guess. I don't want this to be too thick and clumpy either, though. And these curls go every which way. All right, now let's do some on the top. I'm tempted to put a little fringe around here where there's a shadow cast on her head, but I think I will. I think I'll put a little bit of a halo a little further back.
Oh ja. Okay, we'll do the rest of it with a different brush. So I have a bottle cap here. These are great for pouring your masking out into. The smaller the better. I should have gone ahead and done that while ago. I actually, I was dipping in kind of deep, though. <sighs> okay. So what have I got that's going to work here? Well, that's too clunky. This is a little fine one. Uh, but I do want to fill in a few of these areas here. Because I don't want it to all be individual hairs. It becomes too, uh, which it's got a lot there, but it becomes too uh, chaotic. So let's fill a lot of these areas in, particularly close to where they meet the head. And I might also just create a few more strands that are a little... Uh, more individual. Yeah, I just felt like doing that right there. Let's get a few more of these areas a little more solid. I think that'll be enough. If I need to fill more of it in later, I can do that. All right, so let's go to this side. Well, I'll keep it turned this way. I know these are hard for some of you to look at like this. Uh, if you happen to have an iPad, if you're looking at this on an iPad, you can lay the thing down and get it turned where, uh, where you're looking at it right side up. I, I figure that's probably not convenient for most people, but you can do that. So a lot of these light spots are going to run behind other hairs. Don't let that worry you. Okay, now. Here's where the art part comes in. I want to be able to lay this down right here so you can see it. Okay. Uh, and this gets very confusing to look at. I've got a, a line here, actually, that's this hair right here. And you might can find that and work from there. Or you can just, you know, make it up. You don't have to stay in my lines. Please don't just stay in my lines. There, put in a couple extras, and then we have little hairs swinging this way. Wash it out, squeeze it out. You see, a lot of the time, if I don't want a line to be too thick, I'm gonna 
I'm going to do that. I'm going to rake it off so that I don't get a, a clunky line. And if you've got nice, fresh PBO, it'll flow off of here almost like watercolor. You know, I thought this was going to be just a real bitch. It's not too bad. Uh, well, there's those. and Gee, I don't know. Here's something here. I don't even see it on my lines. Maybe I'll just make a few extras. Because I feel like it. You don't want, to, um, want them all to run parallel. They are very individual here. I hear Claire is something of an individual herself. This hair right over in here is not that light. But I would like to be sure that I preserve it. I can tint it later. And if I run this right on top of these other lines, they may pull up. So some of this should probably get a little bit more solid in here. Let's just push that brush down and make a little, make a, I wasn't going to put all this on the video, but the more that I work with it, the more I can see how it might be helpful. You know, there's just some other curls here that I just would like to be sure that they're sharp and that they show up. So, I'm going to put them in, even though they're not the white ones. Uh, like I said, I can tint them lighter very easily. But I would like for them to stand out as individual curls. They're just too pretty. Okay, let's see. Here we have some right here. One this one. I love working with curly hair. I loved working with Lolly's curly hair, but I've never tried to do, make these locks do what, what they're doing here. So we're learning together a little bit. And remember, if a little bit of mess goes down, it's covered. You don't have to have a thick, a thick line of mask for it to work. It will work. Okay. Maybe I'll just do a few more of these. They're just so pretty. This one curls back up that way. Yeah, I like that. You know, sometimes you can start having so much fun with something that you get carried away and do too much of it. I'm really not concerned that I'll wind up with too much of it. The major thing is not to have a whole lot of individual predictable curls, and hers are not predictable. So right down here, Again, we've got some that are mid-tone. See, like right in through here. And those are just kind of mishmushed into the background. But maybe I'll make a few there. So let's 
so oh there's one that does this I just love those that do that I know you can't see what that is and I don't have a word for it the curls going one way from where you're looking at it and then it's seems to be going the other way Okay, that's probably enough of that. So don't save this. You could throw the lid away, or if you're conserving lids, because you might be for some future other project, or to keep with your masking fluid, just wipe it out, or you can let it set up and then you can peel it out. Okay, we're gonna let that dry. See you back here in a little bit. By the way, I have seen Lauren McCracken use a uh, drafting tape, which you could get at Hobby Lobby. Uh, and, and that would probably be easier to work with if you can see your lines through it okay. Now, uh, the other thing is when I pulled up, which I already did it, but when I pulled up my tape, I pulled it up either this way or away from the masking. If you pull towards the masking, there's a chance you may pick up some of your masking and pull it off. Uh, I didn't have a problem with it, but I can see how it could happen. Uh, that's all. I think I'm going to go ahead and post this part just because it's been so darn long.